If you want to pass your exams in nursing school, you have to know the mechanism of action for all of the medications that you're studying. And I am not just talking about your just regular pharmacology exams. I'm talking about all exams in nursing school because you are going to be tested on medications all of the time in nursing school throughout your program and on the NCLEX. So it's so, so, so important that you know your meds inside and out to make sure that you can pass your nursing exams. So here's a walkthrough of the mechanism of action of furosemide. We're gonna talk about how it works and what it does to electrolytes in the body as well. And this video is pretty special because it's part of a tutor call I did inside our nursing SOS membership community where our students can send me their questions and I will answer them. So I hope you love it. Let's dive in. All right, my friend, let's talk about furosemide. So what furosemide is going to do in the nephron is it is going to bind to the thick ascending limb and block the sodium potassium chloride symporter. So that's going to be right around here in this thick ascending limb right there. Okay, so the symporter is going to be right around that area. And what furosemide is going to do is it's going to block that. So sodium, potassium, and chloride are moving up here. They're going into the urine. And typically what would happen is some of it would be reabsorbed back into the blood. But with furosemide, it blocks this action from occurring. So that symporter is blocked by furosemide. So sodium, potassium, and chloride are lost in the urine. They go all the way down here, boop, out into the urine because they cannot be reabsorbed in the blood. Now, something really interesting that's also going to happen with furosemide is that it stops the sodium potassium pump from working. Now this changes the electrical charge on the cell walls, on the cells here, in this uh, thick, ascending, um, thick ascending limb in the nephron. So it's gonna change the electrical charge so that calcium and magnesium cannot get through. Calcium and magnesium, so calcium, we'll write it out here so you can visually see it, Ca2 plus and Mg2 plus, forgive my handwriting on the computer, <laughs> not the best. So Ca2 plus calcium, Mg2 plus is magnesium. Now those are positively charged. So when furosemide uh, blocks that sodium potassium pump from working, it actually switches the electrical charge um, along those cell mem membranes. So the calcium and the magnesium, which are positively charged, they can't get back into the cell to move into the blood. So those will also stay in the urine as well, shoom, go all the way down and out into the urine. So overall, we have a loss of sodium, we have a loss of potassium, we have a loss of chloride, calcium, and magnesium from the body because it's just being excreted in the urine. So that is how furosemide works and also uh, other loop diuretics, how they work in the kidney. So I hope that tutor call was helpful for you. If you are interested in joining the NMC and getting access to all of the resources and the videos and the cheat sheets and the study guides that I have for you to help you pass nursing school, I'll put the link to that in the description for you to check out all of the details. And if you're taking pharmacology in nursing school and want to make sure that you pass, click on this video here, my friend, and I will walk you through my top tips to help you rock your farm exams. And be sure to show your support by liking this video and subscribing subscribing to my channel. And as always, my friend, go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I will see you over there in that next video.